So in this question, we have a copper coin that is initially at a height of 50 meters, and we have to ask ourselves, what type of energy would be present if you had a stationary coin that was lifted 50 meters off the surface of the ground? And of course, that would be gravitational potential energy. So we're just going to label that PE with a subscript G. That would be the initial energy present in the coin. The coin then falls to the ground, and it's going to lose that gravitational potential energy. But of course, energy has to go somewhere. Where does the energy go? Well, it goes into thermal energy, or at least a portion of it goes into thermal energy. In fact, the question notes that 60% of the initial energy is converted into thermal energy. So we've indicated that the coin is going to heat up with this little sort of orange color, and we can denote that thermal energy by using the letter capital Q. Now, conservation of energy allows us to set these equal to each other, but remember that only 60% or 0.60 of the gravitational potential energy is going to be converted into that thermal energy. And then we can expand these equations. We know from an earlier chapter that the gravitational potential energy is the mass of the coin times the lowercase g, the gravitational constant, and then multiplied by the height of the coin. And then on the other side, we have this new form of energy, which is the thermal energy that you're learning about in this chapter. And that is equal to m times the specific heat of copper times the change in temperature. Now, of course, a change in temperature is a final temperature minus an initial temperature. Now you'll notice that the mass appears in both terms on each side of the equation. So when you divide both sides of the equation by the mass m, it will cancel out. Now we're trying to solve this equation for the final temperature of the coin. So what we'll do next is divide both sides of the equation by the specific heat of copper so it cancels out on the right hand side. And then we will add to both sides the initial temperature and that way that cancels out on the right hand side. Now at this stage we're ready to plug in the known values. Here is the question. Again, we can just take a look. Remember the height was 50 meters. We have the initial temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. The mass is given, but as you noticed, it canceled out anyway, so we don't even need that mass. And of course, little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The specific heat of copper, which is that lowercase c, needs to be looked up in a table, so we'll go ahead and plug that in as well. So we've looked up that value as 387 joules per Kelvin degree Celsius. We plug everything in here and we get approximately 25.8. This is a temperature, so the final unit will be degrees Celsius. That is the final temperature of the coin and the answer to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked, does the result depend on the mass of the coin? Well, the answer is no. And the reason is, when you go back and look at our calculation, we divided both sides of the equation by the mass m. It canceled out. So the mass of the coin is irrelevant to the answer to part A of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.